We have a stream issue. All right. Well, we'll, f we'll finish this up. Um, he he did not say uh, he did not qualify by saying they're authoritarian. He uh, basically just uh, went on to say, like, there was a problem with the economy. I don't know. Barack Obama canceled. I love the uh, Gusano-ass tweet that Pete Buttigieg did about Bernie's statements on Cuba. Because in between Bernie making those initial statements and now, Pete Buttigieg wrote a very nice essay about him. Mm. Yeah, Pete's essay came out in the meantime. So what's happening now with the uh, stream? Are we down on the uh, video? Oh, and we restarted streaming. Did we lose the first one? Attack them on? Yeah, okay. I guess there is two. All right, so there's two parts today to today's show. Um, let's take a uh, phone call, shall we? Calling from a 614 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling uh, from? Let's take a uh, phone call, shall we? Let's, let's see. I guess we're streaming to this guy. Hello? Calling from a 614 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Oh, now it's echoing over. Bye bye. It's like staring into the abyss. Just I know. I, I know. It's terrible. Calling from a 319 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? He's watching something else. Bye At bye. Least be watching us, guys. Yeah, come on. Oh, should we do a random rush? What time is it? It's two thirty. It's the bottom of the hour. He's probably not on right now. We can try it. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see. Get him while you still can. Yeah, exactly. Where is this guy? Let's see. Listen now. Bear with us, folks. Trying to see if we can listen to uh, Rush Limbaugh. See if he's still uh, kicking. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just picked a w random station. I believe that the president has learned. Okay, I think um, I think we got him. Wait, oh no, is that uh, was that you? Oh no, that was uh, yeah, it was my Susan Collins. President has oh, learned. Drop. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Let's see. Ugh. Huge supporter of Trump, and I know it doesn't okay. mean much now, but I thought he was going to beat. All right. Put that, put that, uh, okay. All right, folks, it's time for uh, an Flashback episode. Back to 1980. Put that down. It's time for an episode of Random Rush. That's where I listen to Rush Limbaugh randomly for 90 seconds uh, or 60 seconds, and then I reply in 90 been a long time since we did this bit, but uh, we may not have much more time to do it, so I want to do it. And I say that with all due respect, of course. Uh, all right, uh, put them on. I think they think so, too. I think, I, think that, I, I think they think that Trump is going to... Well, we know that, that lunatic Al Green, a Democrat from wherever he's from, said, we got to impeach Trump, otherwise he's going to be reelected. They all know incumbent presidents have this power. It's called incumbency. Hmm. It's got to be, I've often thought about this. Here you are, any president, but let's let's do this with Trump since he is the current president. Trump has been through the rigors of a campaign. He went through a campaign where nobody, except a few of us, thought he was going to win, much less had a chance. He vanquished everybody. He didn't spend a whole lot of money. He finagled the media into giving him free, look at all those rallies they televised, because they hated him so much, they kept waiting for him to implode. That's another thing that has them ticked off. Trump plays them like they are violins that he owns. And 
now Trump is watching this madcap group of frustrated Democrats try to do what he did. And he's sitting in the White House or traveling around on Air Force One or over in India, speaking to a crowd of 125,000. He's been there and he's done it. He is where all of them dream of being. He. Okay. I mean, not so interesting. <laughs> but um, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that first off, I listened to Rush Limbaugh very carefully in the run up of 2016 because I was fascinated by it. And he was not on the Trump train. He was. He was not on a different train, but he was just basically uh, uh, by the station. And every time the Trump train came by, he would jog alongside it a little bit. But he was not on the Trump train. But aside from uh, the self-aggrandizing, um, uh, it is true. Incumbency is an advantage. Of course, incumbents usually win. Um. And it's quite possible that Donald Trump might win again. But I will remind you, Donald Trump lost the popular vote by over 3 million ballots. He won uh, in three states with a total of 70,000 votes amongst those three states. There were millions of people who voted for Obama who stayed home. Hillary Clinton was uniquely ill-suited to run against uh, Donald Trump more than anyone else. And so um, I think a fairly competent Democratic candidate who does not alienate the low propensity voters has the best chance of winning against Donald Trump. And I think um, <clears throat> there's a couple of those candidates, I think, that won't... Um, that will not alienate those low propensity voters. But uh, Bernie Sanders, I believe, is one of them. So we shall see. Yeah, and it remains to be seen if he can get out people who don't normally vote because the primaries are not indicative of the turnout in the general election. Isn't that kind of mixed about the uh, the indications as to whether he's turning out new people? Because my impression, at least from the first two states, was that he is getting some of the people who you need to turn out that don't offer, like young people, but he's losing all the old people. And eventually they'll come in line in the general. I, I mean, look, the the percentage of people who voted for the first time, I think it was in Iowa, one of these three states is lower than it has been in, in uh, 2008. So it's, it's hard to say. Um, I don't think, I mean, there was a piece in the New York Times saying he is not bringing out new voters. It is not clear that he's bringing out a substantial amount of new voters, but it's also not clear that he's not. It is a very, very weird situation that we have in this election because I'm convinced that there's a significant cohort of Democrats, high propensity voting Democrats, who, high propensity in terms of a general election, who are basically sitting back on, I can't decide. I don't want to decide. I'm going to vote for the Democrat. Show me who it is. There is no doubt that Bernie is not strong amongst suburban women who are an integral part, maybe a key part of the 2018 um, election. But it's also not clear that they really need someone to vote for as opposed to voting against. I mean, the fact of the matter is there was a record number of Democrats that came out in 2018. Record number. They won by a record number of votes. Now, you have to win by more than, than normal because of all the gerrymandering. But they, that was not because there was a whole class of really repugnant Republican congressional candidates that were uniquely, 2018 provided like a unique class of, no, it was because of Donald Trump. So the bet is that those people who are disgusted with Donald Trump, those people who unfollowed Mindy because she came out as a uh, Bernie supporter, they're still going to come out and vote against Donald Trump. That's the bet. That's the bet. 
We should have asked Mindy what her sense is. Are these people going to vote blue no matter who, or are they going to sit it out? Well, I will find out, you know, and there may be, you know, and, and then the, the other argument, it seems to me, and I mean, that's the bet. Because I think, you know, most people would, 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 would argue or concede even that Bernie Sanders is going to bring out a, uh, is, is uniquely situated to bring out voters who were not there in 2016. The real question is, you know, will he bring out, will he keep those people who, you know, who came out in 2018? Um, the, um, and, 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 you know, time will tell, I guess. The argument that he's going to hurt down ballot races, that doesn't make any sense to me. Because, I, you know, it's conceivable that you're a suburban woman who's like, I don't like Bernie Sanders. He creeps me out. He smells. Whatever it is, right? That they, uh, you know, that, that MSNBC. He shouts. He shouts. <clears throat> I don't like him. In fact, I don't like him uh, as much as I don't like Donald Trump. That person voted in 2018. I still think they're going to come out and they're going to vote for their Democratic candidate in their House or the Senate. I, I don't see why they would stay at home. Like, I think like if you, if, if the point is I hate Donald Trump, but I also hate Bernie Sanders. If you're that invested, you're the type of person who would go and specifically leave the ballot blank. That's what happened with Clinton. Yeah. And, um, the problem, the real problem with Clinton was not even that as much as the people who just didn't show up to vote. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Bernie has way fewer haters than Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I mean, on that point, I don't think it's actually even true that people think he's too shouty. I think it's true that a bunch of media people think he's too shouty. But I mean, there's look, some crossover between the groups we're talking you know, about. You know, I mean... Mindy just lost 2,000, uh, you know, supporters because she said she was, I mean, so but there she is. she still has like 500 million. No, I know. But, but the, 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 for people to unsubscribe for a take, like, I mean, have you ever done that on Twitter? Like how many times have you done that? Right. I mean, it's a big deal. I don't, I, listen, I don't think people should delude themselves as to, you know, whether there is actually some real disdain for Sanders out there, I think there still is. The question is, does that uh, disdain trump the disdain for Trump? That is what I call the Trump disdain question. Like this conversation would be so much harder if Romney was the president right now and we and Bernie would have to go up against Romney. Yeah. Like it's Trump. Oh, Trump sure. kind of makes this conversation a lot easier. Yeah. Like if you're if you're on the fence between Bernie and Trump, I mean, I don't know. Do you think I don't know how that that population can't be that large? I think if it was Mitt Romney, I think Bernie would have a big a real problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's probably a fraction of those types of voters who are just like, I don't want my taxes to go up, or maybe he just seems like a jerk, who knows, and won't vote for him. But I They're feel highly like propagandized. the majority of people especially people who like really identify as Democrats, they're going to vote against Trump. Well, that's true. But recall when we're talking about 11,000 votes in uh, Wisconsin and 20,000 in Michigan and 40, we are talking about fractions. I mean, that well, is, that is exactly the point. There's, uh, there's no doubt. Well, we live in an era places of, where Bernie would do well, I think. That's why we make the opposite. We just got to hope. Did. We just got to hope. Yeah. Right. We just got to hope that to the extent that, you know, Mindy's uh, compatriots in the suburbs of, uh, of Philadelphia uh, or of Pittsburgh uh, or the people who live in the suburbs of uh, Wisconsin or of Detroit. That. I mean, that's that's the challenge. We'll see. We shall see. But I mean, Can't the fact is, is that I just don't know who you could make a better argument has a chance of winning. That's just the bottom line. Let's take one more phone call. Call from a 610 area code. Folks, I'm sorry. We're not going to get to any more calls. We will be doing uh, coverage tonight. And uh, tomorrow we'll also just be doing a wrap up. So we'll be doing some news tomorrow. Uh, 610, who's this? Hey, Sam. Mike from Pennsylvania. How this are you? This is almost like an exclusively like, you know. 
uh, multiple time callers a day. Hey, Mike, That's I'm right. glad you called. Uh, my attorney uh, got in contact with me recently and uh, noticed your uh, your Twitter um, avatar has lasers shooting out of its eyes. Um, That's right. And I'm not sure if you've seen the Majority Report uh, Twitter avatar. It is one with what? me with lasers shooting out of my eyes. Now, uh, I don't follow these well, things, but my, my IP Sam, attorneys do. this is a derivative do. work off of Superman. You may have heard of it, the concept of nope. shooting lasers out of your eyes. Nope. Might have predated nope. um, uh, predated Majority Report. I'm not familiar with that. But, um, I think yeah. room dividers yeah. also but, existed, but... I would encourage your uh, attorney you. to send me a letter so I can resend one about vexatious lawsuits and Rule 10 sanctions. So let's go. Let's go, Sam. Let's go. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> listen, my lawyers handle all this. I don't uh, deal with anything directly. <laughs> uh, Mike from PA, uh, which you now, I guess, call yourself, uh, which is, uh, I think, something that uh, came from this program. But that's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you're trying to catch a hold a little bit of my huge twitch.tv success. <laughs> now, man. now regularly, well over a thousand uh, concurrent yeah, viewers. No, I've so, heard that. Yes, started, I've heard that. Started, All right. So what's started it? to crush it. Thankfully, because Jamie, that was the real turning point. Jamie came on my program and people got more interested. Boom. There so you go. I want to credit her. All right. Oh, you're welcome. Enough. <laughs> I do what I can. So I wanted to call. Yeah, go ahead, Jamie. Sorry. Oh, no. I just said I do what I can. Yeah. 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 So Mike's been on my show. You know, Jamie's been on my show. Uh, I'm sure Matt will get on my show before Sam does. Well, I mean, what am I going to do? Just come on your show? You haven't invited. You have not invited me. All right. Well, I'll I'll send you an email. Uh, As Joe Biden says, where I come from, you got to ask when you're running for the Senate. (laughs) Yeah, put them next to all the other emails I sent you. Um, oh, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. What I'm I wanted to talk to you guys emails. about, if I could, yeah, was to dispel the notion of a broker convention and how like laughably stupid this idea is. Um, I and think I, I think did that yesterday, my... but okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> Say again. I think I did that yesterday, right. Mike, but apparently you were too busy prepping for your show uh, before <laughs> to, to watch this one. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just most of them are premised on the idea that people can stay in the race. And Tuesday, Super Tuesday, is going to be the last day for almost every single candidate. They just don't have the funds. They already don't have the funds. They're on shoestring budgets. They can't run any advertising. Um, They're begging for, like, immediate infusions of cash. Both Buttigieg and Warren did this. Everybody knows that Biden's basically had no money for almost the entire campaign. So there is no credible way they can stay in. The only person who can probably stay in is Mike Bloomberg. And he doesn't seem to be catching on anywhere. Um, And all the evidence shows that a Bloomberg versus Bernie race is going to be heavily in favor of Bernie. Well, Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I have an alternate theory as to why there won't be a brokered convention is that it would just be too stupid. I mean, I, like, like, I think that if, if somebody comes in with within like a three or four point, uh, d- you know, difference between Bernie and that other person, I think it's conceivable there where people could maybe convince themselves like, oh, this won't destroy the party and we'll be able to come together after this. But if they um, I just don't think there's enough deluded people who think that they can win against Donald Trump. If they broker a convention that does not land on the person who has a plurality of votes that is anywhere around like, you know, anything above six, seven, eight percentage points, which I think is, you know, the most likely scenario, uh, at least that Bernie lead that Bernie could take into the thing. Now, it's, you know, who knows? Maybe Joe Biden today uh, wins South Carolina by 20 points and uh, then all of a sudden everything changes. But um, I I just think that. I think it's more likely that to the extent that there's a desire to not have Bernie uh, as the uh, as the nominee, that the people just decide like, OK, he gets the nomination. We sit it out and we wait four more years. Yeah, I think the, the thing for me is I don't know that I agree with you because I have a much lower opinion of Democratic establishment figures than you from personal experience. 
And I have no doubt in my mind that if they thought that they could block Bernie, they probably will. Um, uh, I do think that there's a significant number of elected officials who would balk at like, if it's, you know, if it takes the entire superdelegate race, you know, superdelegate slate, they're not going to be able to pull that off. But if it's plausible, you know, uh, I think they'll, I think they'll do it. I mean, I look at the way they dogged the race in Maryland with Ben Jealous um, and basically gave it to Larry Hogan, who's a Republican. Uh, I, I don't doubt that, that they'd be willing to do the same thing against Bernie, even, even against Trump. Um, and that's why you see a lot of... A well, that's what people. I'm saying, though. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's different from, from, from the convention. I'm saying that they would sit it out. They would let him. They would let him uh, get the nomination, and would rather see him lose rather than trying to, like, sort of obviously swing the nomination at the con- at the convention and then suffer the consequences for that. What and I, and I, yeah, I mean, I guess that's possible. But you know, one of the things that's always true. I mean, and I and I and I agree with you, but I don't know. I mean. I just think the contested convention is so mathematically not going to happen at this point. Um, like uh, it, it's something that always pops up, but Bernie's won three straight states, and he run won the last one pretty convincingly. Like, and he's leading big in California. He might very well lead by 400 delegates on Super Tuesday. Right. So, like, that's I, not going to happen. What right. will happen is he's the nominee. I, I think I don't want to call it because who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks but i think right now you know nomiki on her show said something like bernie's there's like a five percent chance bernie doesn't win and i think that's probably pretty close um, yeah i mean i would say i mean you know as of today like you know 85 percent chance he wins maybe i'd be a little bit less uh, yeah uh, but yeah and but, i don't yeah. i don't think people are really realizing that it's well like, i think it's okay no. for people not to realize that <laughs> um no i, mean, I think I, th- you're right. I agree with you i, I agree with you i want to I want to see the, uh, the the point where, like, I don't want a Jeremy Corbyn moment where they have three years to bash, you know, him. I want them to stay surprised as long as possible because that means less time spent attacking him. But I think, you know, they're starting to wake up right now. And we're seeing, you know, the, the, the feared oppo is finally coming. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Can I say, can I say one thing about that, Sam? Like the, the oppo attack line? Yeah. Yeah. So as somebody who's ran campaigns before, you need at least three weeks of repetition on your ads if you're going to be doing any kind of negative attack. We're less than two weeks away. There isn't anything. I mean, maybe Bloomberg can bend the curve and do it in a week and a half. But just in mechanics of like shooting a television ad, contacting ad buyers, getting those ad buyers to reserve slots, like, there's just no time. So if there was some knockout oppo that they could be running, they would have already run it. So I'm not even sure like why this gets said in the media with, with a straight face. Because they have an absence uh, of content but... and they need to fill it with something. <laughs> I guess so. Well, I mean, so. honestly, I think to a, to a large extent, the oppo is the, the idea that there might be oppo. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. That's a, and it's the same thing with this down ballot weight. Like Bernie Sanders is going to hurt down ballots. You know who hurt down ballots? Hillary Clinton. Yes. No, I, like, I yeah, I agree with you totally. I, I because she suppressed the vote. <laughs> that's absolutely right. And you had you had Professor Bitcoffer on a couple months ago, uh, and she talked about how like we live in a hyper polarized environment. Yes. And there, if there's one thing like. This will explain American politics for everyone that they understand it is people don't define themselves really as strong Democrats or strong Republicans much. They define themselves against it's negative partisanship. Now, here's the one thing. Here's one thing that you will that that I have yet to hear in any calculation. You know, there was a uh, don't freak out medium post that was written by a Biden guy who is actually like the Biden's big money guy. I can't remember who it is off the top of my head, but maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow. And he was basically trying to calm everybody saying, you know, Bernie Sanders got a 45% chance of winning. So don't worry, ba 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 ba. The one thing that nobody talks about that I think is completely underestimated 
in Bernie's electability, and this is going to piss some people off, and I think that's why we don't hear it much. In this era of negative partisanship, Bernie Sanders will have the ability on a limited basis, because he's got to walk a line here, to deploy the fact that he has been an independent for part of his... Um, now, I don't know that he would say this, but, I, you know, if I was the campaign, I would be, you know, there would be some surrogates in certain areas who would be going out and making this argument that his sort of like distance from the Democratic Party, which is a liability in the context of the primary for what, you know, I'm sorry for me personally, I think is silly reasons, but uh, whatever. The bottom line is it's not going to be worth a ton of votes. But it could be worth a few votes um, that he is in an era of negative partisanship. Like you say, people vote against Republicans. People vote against Democrats. And the fact that he is like sort of a little bit nebulous, because I still go on shows where people are like, you know, have these comments where they go like, he's not even a Democrat. All right. Well, that's actually going to be a positive in the general election. Because people are going to vote against the Republican. They're going to vote against uh, Donald Trump. And so uh, I think eventually we'll start to hear more about that. Yeah, people are fed up with both parties. He hung up on me. He probably had to go do his show. All right, folks, we've gone way over. Um, We will be back in about five hours to stream tonight's debate. The Thrilla in... South Carolina. Yeah. Keep workshopping you it. You do your best. You do your best, folks. See you tonight. It might go straight that guy to get to where I want. But I know somehow I'm going to get there. I wasn't looking when I just got caught between the truth and the light bar. Yeah, I know the clock is ticking, but the meds are gonna kick in, and my pilot light shining bright. I guess I'm where the choice was made, for the option where you don't get paid, for the road that bends before it finally breaks.